guys, welcome to the Travels Part 2 video. This is where I'm going to Disneyland. Hope you guys enjoy it. My favorite part is probably going to be the airplane because I haven't been on one in like four years. So yeah, it's been a long time. Hope they have those little tiny TVs. I don't have to use my phone very often because on my first day, it's just going to be like a relaxing kind of day. Well, guys, enjoy being on the airplane. Okay, guys, bye. Port. We have to take a shuttle. A shuttle.
picture of the airplane. We are here at Universal Studios. Harry Potter. Oh, there's the train. Nine and a half. Nine and a half station. Wait, what'd you say, Mom? Wait, what'd you say, Mom? It's easier to wait 40 minutes than two hours. Oh. <laughs> yeah, dude. I hate to We're gonna tell survive. You. Yeah, that's a really good point. The bird. It's fake snow. Well, let's see if it's real. Let's sit it on your head. <laughs> let's see if it's really cold. No, you go. No. I already said that. <laughs> Why are we going so slow? And here's Hogwarts. 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 If you can take pictures and walk, you can do that. I can't. I can't. I can't. But it looks so cool. I think that's the entrance. Or is that the entrance right there? We're trying to find the entrance. Calm down. Do, 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 do. Hawkwards. Jeez. We're under Hawkwards. We're in Hawkwards. <laughs> It is incredibly dark here. Uh, it is so dark. Oh, the mirror. Everybody. Whoa. I don't know who that is. <laughs> and there's the bird where his offices. Dumbledore's offices. It's so dark. So freaking cool here. Whoa, it moves. Whoa. Sounds like yet another clear violation of the Warlocks Convention of 1709. Then again, all these muggles running about, that's the dragon. Dude, it's freaking awesome. To look at. Oh, it's freaking cool. 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 Whoa, 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 whoa. Remember, meet everybody in the room of the It's Harry Potter. Everything worked out perfectly. Perfectly. Harry Potter in. Your mom is here. Whoever her name. Yeah. Oh, there's Harry Potter. 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 Wow. 
gonna be us. <laughs> Hogwarts. That's really cool. Sorry I couldn't record the ride. The ride was really crazy. Alright guys, see you guys later. Bye. Roller coaster. That wasn't really too bad. My Everest goes forward. Jeez. You want to go again? Mom, can we go again? Yes. Can we go again? Oh, All right. Grandma wants a picture of the. We're at the door shop of Simpsons. Simpsons. Live in the Tonight Show, it's Jimmy Fallon. You made it. You made it. Welcome to the Universal Studio Tour. I'm Jimmy Fallon. I'll be making sure you get through this experience in one piece. You've got the very best guy, Lou, and the greatest driver, Joseph. They're the best. I love them. Even though Luke owes me five bucks. I know you guys are excited to get on the tour, but first, a few safety rules. Yeah, we got some safety rules. First, if you need guest assistance or have a medical emergency, or if you drop something of value off the side of the tram or have any sound or video issues, just reach up and grab the red E-cord that runs along the center of the ceiling of the tram, and I will be back to assist you as soon as it is safe to do so. Otherwise, during the entire tour, please stay seated at all times, keeping your arms and legs in. Finally, for your safety and those around you, please do not use selfie sticks while on board. Now that we got that fun safety stuff out of the way, let's get on with the tour. We're currently headed down the Universal Timeline. We're on both sides of the tram. You can see just a few of our thousands of movies we've made in over 100 years of filmmaking here at Universal. Coming around the corner on your right-hand side is a real fire station, Fire Station 51. Services Universal City here. That's full of hardworking professionals who keep us safe here at Universal City every day. That's not a set. Uh, those aren't props. You'll see more of those. Uh, you'll see sets a little bit later on the tour, but that is not one of them. Currently, uh, we're continuing down our Universal timeline. You'll see some more of our favorite pictures from more recent films. We're headed into the front lot. The front lot here is where we have our sound stages. Sound stages are large warehouse looking buildings where about 80 to 90% of filming is done. Uh, they're about 95% soundproof 
and you'll see the first instance of a sound stage here on your left. Sound stage 12. Sound stage 12 here is currently under construction, but it used to be home to The Voice, as you can tell from that large decal on the side, along with the visitor center from Jurassic Park and the mansion from Scarface. It's our largest sound stage there, 30,000 square feet. One of our oldest sound stages, built in 1929. As we continue on the tour, on your left-hand side, you'll see some more sound stages. These are sound stages 11, 10, and 9. These three sound stages were recently home to Bel Air, a dramatic retelling of the 90s comedy The Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Uh, you can stream that on Peacock, our streaming service here at NBC Universal. Uh, and that stars Jabari Banks and Cassandra Freeman. They're currently inside the next two sound stages on your left, sound stages uh, 8 and 9 filming the second season. Uh, eight and nine were also recently home to um, Hacks, the Emmy award-winning comedy on HBO Max. And that stars Jean Smart, who won an Emmy for her performance in the first season of Hacks and was nominated for an Emmy for her performance in the second season. Uh, both Hacks and Bel Air are produced by our very own Universal Television. You may notice some construction happening to the right-hand side of the train because we are currently expanding our front lot. We're expanding our theme park as well, and we are very excited to announce that Super Nintendo World will be opening in early 2023 here at Universal Studios Hollywood. You can find updates about Super Nintendo World on our website and social media accounts. Now on your left-hand side, you'll see another sound stage here. Uh, this was home to Mission Control in Apollo 13, the Grinch's mountaintop layer in How the Grinch Stole Christmas, along with Hacks, Superstore, and the GLAAD award-winning revival seasons of Saved by the Bell. Now the front line here is no stranger to television production, as we're currently uh, in production for Netflix's Never Have I Ever, coming up on your right-hand side in sound stages at 16, and uh, a couple more. After that, if you see any of those big elephant doors open, take a peek inside, take a picture. You never know what you might see here. Up ahead on your right-hand side, you will see a sign for Illumination Entertainment. It's kind of been vandalized by some minions there. The minions have a movie in theaters right now. Minions, the rise of Gru. <laughs> They started to think now. Coming up on our left-hand side, we have our production bungalows. These bungalows are homes away from home for production companies who are working on films here on the lot before they start filming. It's what we call pre-production. And uh, some production companies that have bungalows here are Mark Black Productions, working on the movie adaptation of the musical Wicked. Uh, we've got Jordan Peele's Monkey Paw, whose movie Nope comes out this Friday. Dwayne Johnson, Seven Bucks Productions, working on Young Rock, and Amy Pascal's Pascal Pictures, who brought you Spider-Man No Way Home. Now, currently on your left-hand side, you'll see two more sound stages. These look a little bit different from the sound stages you saw earlier, because these are newer. When they were building these, they decided to combine those production bungalows with the sound stages, so they put these offices here at the front, so that pre-production and production could happen at the same time. We call it the production mullet, business in the front, party in the back. Uh, sound stage 22 there on the left hand side was called the Will and Grace sound stage after the revival seasons of the Emmy award winning comedy were filmed right there. We're now entering the back lot where we have our large open air sets. Uh, currently on our right hand side, sorry our left hand side we have our metropolitan sets. These metropolitan sets can substitute for any big city or small town anywhere in the world. There's some production happening here right now, so get those cameras out. These metropolitan sets can uh, be any city, like I said, Los Angeles, Chicago, San Francisco, Baltimore, uh, London, even New York, where my co-host Jimmy knows a lot about it. I'm going to turn it over to him. Jimmy, take it away. Hey, everyone. Welcome to New York. That's maybe some production happening right here. Uh, currently, in our metropolitan sets, we are heading up to London Square here on your right-hand side. This was built with a general European aesthetic in mind, so the set designers can come in and dress up this set however they need to for their production. London Square here was actually India for the Mindy Project, starring Mindy Kaling. 
The street running parallel to ours is New York Street that you just saw in that clip from Jimmy. Now, New York Street has been a ton of places, not just New York. That's where we film American Ninja Warrior. They build their obstacle courses right down the center of New York Street, and those contestants compete from midnight to 6 o'clock in the morning. Uh, it makes all, all those stunts that they do even more impressive that it's happening in the wee hours of the morning there. New York Street was also London for Fast and Furious presents Hobbs and Shaw. Uh, now that movie they filmed a majority of on location in London, but uh, when the filmmakers were going over... when the fifth car of the tram got ripped off from the rest and thrown into the jungle by one of those dinosaurs? Well, that's because the people in that car weren't sitting down. No, I'm kidding. The people in that car were the team from Weta FX. They put themselves into that film there. And the children on that car were Peter Jackson's children. Now, when a vehicle like that appears in a motion picture, it's what's called a picture car. We got some picture cars that you may recognize coming up on your left, so get those cameras out. You're not going to want to miss these. We've got the Ferrari from Magnum P.I., we call it a faux Rari because the Ferrari engine was too loud for the sound crew, so they had to replace it with the engine of a Volkswagen. It's futuristic cars from Back to the Future 2 and some prehistoric cars from the Flintstones. We've got the flying Ford Anglia from Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets and Angeline's bright pink Corvette. Now, any locals may be familiar with Angeline and her pink Corvette. If not, Check out the miniseries Angeline, now streaming on Peacock. We've got the Craw Daddy from Jordan Peele's Us, along with two Jeeps and the Bradley Infantry Fighting Vehicle from Transformers. Now I know that Bradley Infantry Fighting Vehicle looks like a real tough tank. I promise you, it is not. Other than a metal chassis that it sits on so it can move around, that Bradley Infantry Fighting Vehicle is made entirely out of plywood. It's painted to look like real metal and they did a great job, but if you were to take that into battle in our studio's DNA, which is why we keep them right here in these cages, so that we could use them when the cages are empty. Uh, everyone, just keep an eye out for any loose dinosaurs. We never know where they may end up. Um, Maybe hold on to your kids extra tight. We don't want to lose another one this week. <laughs> um, we'll get someone to find them. That'll, that'll be fine. Um, now, the weather plays an important role in the Jurassic Park films. A hurricane effectively strands the characters on the island. Vibrating pools of water alert the characters to the approaching dinosaurs and... Uh, lightning first illuminates the tyrant. These buildings on your right hand side have strobe lights on top that illuminate, giving the illusion of lightning. These buildings on your left house large speakers, which if you listen closely, you'll be able to hear some thunder. That thunder is usually added in post-production as a sound effect, but if the actors need to be able to react to it, they can do it practically, like you can see here. And when the script calls for it, we can also fabricate a little bit of rain. 
Now that rain is coming from sprinklers above the tram that shoots that water up into the air so that it falls down to the ground naturally. That's a process that filmmakers refer to as gravity. Now the rain can play a crucial role in setting the tone of a scene. A very light rain can make for a nice romantic scene. A heavy downpour can create for a dark, intense, brooding, or dramatic scene. So, the filmmakers can alter how hard that rain is falling to alter the tone of the scene. Actually, it looks like it's coming down kind of hard right now. Look at it's staying dry. Whoa, whoa. Cycled down at the bottom of the hill and pumped right back up to the top for you. Steve Martin and Martin Short. From Old Mexico, we turn the corner to the Old West. Welcome to Six Points, our Western sets here on the lot. Recently seen in the ninth film from Quentin Tarantino, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. There's a building coming up on your left hand side uh, where the doors are labeled Fondue Factory. Uh, that building is the only one where you can film inside and outside. That's what's called a practical set. The rest of these are just facades. Facade is a French word meaning false front. That's quite literally what these, the rest of these buildings are. In fact, if you're able to take a peek past the curtains in any... It's like using this set here so they don't have to shut down an actual subway station in New York. This one is set up to be San Francisco. You can tell because the uh, set decorators have come in and put up these posters to say, Welcome to San Francisco. They got a map of the subway lines here to give the viewers a hint of where the scene takes place. That's a crucial job of the set decorators. Uh, they come in and they just trick the audience into thinking they're... shark. You can see it hanging up there on the right hand side. So there is nothing to worry about. My friend George is in the water right now doing one last sweep before they give us the all clear to go in. It's really just a technicality though at this point. Then. Oh no. Oh there that's a that's a real shark. George. Oh no there's George. George is coming right for you George. <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm sure he'll be okay. He's very resilient. <laughs> There's gas going everywhere. This is not good. Whoa. Something really big today. <laughs> so I'm going to have to do this kind of quick. 
<clears throat> Hello, I'm Guru. What's your name? Where are you from? Wow, that might be impressive. Question, question, question. And thank you. Anywho, uh, one moment. Mm -hmm. This is good. But tell the Fario, add more dynamite. I want a bigger boom. You did it here. Anyway, yes, you will be turned into mania. Months ago, my chief scientist, Dr. Navarro, created a device that could turn everyday boring civilians like you into minions. At first, there were a few minor snags. <laughs> and a few major snags. <laughs> Although, I kind of like that guy. As far as you know, and now you too can become a minion. Wow, look at that! I know, right? It's pretty spectacular. I don't know. Before we begin your training, you need to do a routine body scan. Can't have you bring in any human germs into the lab. It's nothing serious. Just some high density lasers. They're very, very powerful. It will not hurt me a bit. Uh oh, we have a problem. It appears that some of you have not showered in like a week. <laughs> not naming names, but it's those guys. <laughs> For the rest of you, if anyone's thinking of backing out, I warn you, I will hit you with my fart gun. Oh yes, I'm packing the stone of the chaos. Whether it be minions or farts. Minions or farts. Ignore them. Not that. Don't be scared of you. He's just a big, bald teddy bear. Yeah, and no way will he shoot you with a fart gun. Oh, no. Oh, Crew, I was wondering if I could do you something. Oh, sure, sweetie, but can it wait? I'm, I'm really behind schedule. And then I have to train these guys. Oh, can we help? What? Yeah, we can train them. Mm, Come on. Let me know. I do not think so. No, no, he's very technical. Come on, we've seen him hundreds of times. Yeah, it's not like it's rocket science.
What's this? I need you a present. It's a little squashed and burnt. It's absolutely perfect. Oh. And I'm going to do girls a little something too. Ha ha ha! 
lost your special delivery. You are my special delivery. Wait, me? Then what That's was right. in that bottle? The secret ingredient to my hot sauce. <laughs> <laughs> Dad, your hot sauce is awesome! And your tongue is as formidable as your kung fu! Yeah, well, I've had a lot of training. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I almost forgot! Bye, guys! Right there, Mom. Thank you for visiting Universal Studios Hollywood and Universal City Walk. Our next stop will be Lancashire Boulevard, the pedestrian bridge over to the Metro subway station. For those of you who took the Metro to the park today, thank you. Remember, green is universal. As a reminder, there is no smoking. Going home.
our basic thousand feet. That's how we ask everyone who's still in the laptop. We'll be coming to the cabin shortly to check your seat pockets and the rights for any item like this car. We're in a cloud. guys i hope you guys liked the video sorry i couldn't record all the rides some of them are really fast roller coasters and water and water roller coasters 
Um, so yeah, I'm gonna. I have a few souvenirs. I'm gonna have to get my last one. I. I hope you guys like the video. I've been walking for twenty hours straight. We only stopped for not even an hour, so I'm pretty tired. Not gonna lie. So we're gonna start with the first thing, which is. The Minion um, water bottle. I got this from the Minions World. Which I also recorded that ride. Which was actually really cool. And then um, I also got this, this egg from Jurassic Park. Which was a water, a water ride. Which I couldn't record because my phone would have been soaked. Because I actually did get soaked in that ride. So let's kind of open it up. And it's a stuffed animal. And his name is Dave. Dave the Dinosaur. I don't know why I named him Dave. I just named him Dave. Alright. My last final thing. Oh, oh no. Not my last thing. Close to my la last thing though. I got this cup. Sorry, I couldn't show you this, guys, when I actually got this. I couldn't record any of the stores, because they didn't really allow it. You were allowed to take pictures, but not videos. It's a really cool Harry Potter cup. I got them from the Harry Potter world. Come here, or come in. Come in. What's up? Mm -mm. Probably tired. Mm -hmm. What, is everybody, or everyone looking for him? No, I don't want to ask him if he wants to jump in the trunk, because it's hot. You, you know his gonna answer is going to be no, because we're all freaking tired, and we had to wake up at 4, or 4.40 in the morning just to catch our flight. Yeah, so we're all tired. He's probably going to say no, but you can try. Okay, we're at our last, last, very last item. I got this from the airport. I got an airplane. This is not the exact same airplane that took us to um, California. Um, but it's really close to it. So that's all the souvenirs I got. I would have gotten more if my little brother did not buy the Harry Potter one. was like 80 bucks. So guys... See you guys in my next video. Good.